we are going to be talking a little bit today about animals because I have a project for you. I told you last week that I was going to be giving you an animal project. So in your packet, I sent you this cover page that has animal project on it. And what I want you to do is I want you to choose one animal that you're going to research. Research means you're going to read about it, watch videos about it. You're going to learn everything you can about this animal. Any animal you want. I bet you there are animals you didn't even realize were animals that I'm going to let you research, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to fill out a poster that I put in your packet. Now, in kindergarten, I would have given you a big poster board that you would have made this big poster of. And if you want to do that just to do your project for fun, you can. But since we're at home, I just sent a paper to do it on paper. But you can make it as big as and exciting as you want, okay? But this is what I would love for you to do. If you can't do the big one, at least do the paper. So you're going to draw or color or paint a picture of your animal. So like this one picked a giraffe. You're going to write the name of the animal, giraffe. You're going to write the classification. We're going to be talking about that today in the video. So a giraffe is a mammal. You're going to draw or find a picture to glue on here of where it lives. So the giraffe lives in an African savanna or in the grasslands, okay? See its house like a home? That's its home where it's lived. Its diet on the plates, you're going to put what it eats. So giraffes eat leaves, twigs, flowers, and fruit, okay? And you can draw pictures. You can write the words. You can print out pictures and glue them on your poster. Anything that you want to do, okay? Then you're going to write its predators. What are the kind of animals that are a danger to this? What does the giraffe have to protect himself from? Well, lions, because lions eat meat, and a lion might want to eat a giraffe. So he has to protect himself from lions. Same thing with leopards and hyenas, okay? Then you want to do your adaptations. We're going to talk to, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today in this video too. So giraffes have really long necks so they can reach the leaves way up high so they can eat the leaves from the trees, okay? That helps them to stay healthy and full of food, which gives them energy. And also giraffes get most of their water from the leaves they eat in the trees. They really don't drink very often. Only if every few days do they actually drink water because the leaves have so much water in them. So that is one of their adaptations. So this is like what I want you to do, except you're gonna have a blank one like this, and you're gonna pick your own animal to do. I also want you to come up with some cool animal facts, like the one I told you about the giraffe drinking water, okay? So talking about animals, there are lots of groups of animals, okay? So I'm gonna go over some of the groups of animals with you. Now, some of these you might not realize are animals, like this reptiles. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They have dry skin. They are covered in scales. And most of them lay eggs, okay? So we have a lizard, a tortoise, and a crocodile. So those are some examples of reptiles, okay? Now, cold-blooded we are warm blooded, okay? Warm blooded. So we get cold easy and we need to stay warm. Well, they don't have to do the same things we have to, okay? Because their blood works a little bit different. So they can stay outside and they don't get cold because of the way that they were made. They can survive in different kinds of environments than we can survive. And that's why there's different types of animals, because different types of animals have different environments or different homes, okay? Another one are arthropods. Now, these look like what? Bugs, right? Insects. So, a butterfly a grasshopper, but this one isn't a bug. This one is a crab, right? Because arthropods are cold-blooded too. They are segmented bodies. So let's see the head and this body part's different. The butterfly has all those pieces, okay? And look, the crab has all the different pieces of their body. 
they have lots of legs and limbs, okay? Remember the butterfly, the caterpillar had six legs, okay, the insect, but the caterpillar at first had lots of little legs. The grasshopper has six legs and the crab, look, he has six legs and he has his claws and also a hard exoskeleton. He's got a hard shell on him, okay? Not like a seashell, just like an outer shell. That's something we call an outer covering, okay? It covers his his body's parts inside. Like we have skin that covers us. They have an exoskeleton that's hard that covers them, okay? I'm gonna save that one for last and we have birds. Birds are easy because birds have feathers and they have wings, okay? And they have bills, their nose, those are called bills, okay? They are warm-blooded, they are warm-blooded like us, which is why they have feathers on them to keep their bodies warm, okay? They also lay eggs, so this is an ostrich, ducks, parrot, those are just some examples of birds. There's also ravens. We have ravens in the Grand Canyon. That's a bird, okay? Or maybe you've seen a bluebird or a hummingbird or a blue jay. There's all kinds of birds. Birds have feathers and wings. Now, it doesn't mean that they fly. Does an ostrich fly very often? I have never seen an ostrich fly. I've seen an ostrich run, okay? So, Birds don't necessarily have to be flying birds. It just means that they have feathers and wings and bills, okay? Like a flamingo bird. Flamingos don't fly. They stand on their legs and they have really long skinny pink legs, okay? So birds have feathers and wings and lay eggs. Then we have fish. Fish live in the water, obviously. We know they have gills to breathe underwater, okay? They live in the water, so they're cold-blooded. This is a goldfish, a shark, a codfish. They can breathe underwater. They have scales and they have fins, okay? Instead of arms and legs, they have fins. That's how they swim around is with their fins. Just like we walk with our legs, they swim with their fins. And instead of breathing out of their mouth with their lungs, they breathe with the gills that are in their body, okay? They're like little openings that let them breathe underwater. Can we breathe underwater? No, we can't. So we're a little bit different than them. Then you have amphibians. Amphibians are also cold-blooded. They lay eggs. They live in water and on land. They can do both. They can breathe underwater or they can breathe in the air and land, okay? They can go in both. So toads, frogs, salamanders, those are some. And then also they undergo metamorphosis. That's the change. Like a caterpillar to a butterfly changed. Well, remember our frog started as a little tadpole that swam with a tail. Do you remember the tadpole? And then it changes into a frog. They change, which is what metamorphosis is, okay? Now, I saved the best for last because this is what kind of animal we are. Mammals. We are mammals. Did you know that? You are a mammal. I am a mammal. And so is a dolphin. So is a lion. Look, there's people. We have hair or fur. Now, a lion has some fur on it. My cat might have fur, but do I have fur? No, I have what? We have hair on us, okay? They can have hair or fur. They can't breathe underwater. Can you breathe underwater? I can't breathe underwater. We have to breathe the air with our lungs, right? We're warm-blooded, so we need to protect ourselves to stay warm, okay? And also, we have live births. I can't read backwards. <laughs> that means that the mommies, in the, instead of laying eggs, they actually give birth to their babies, okay? They have birth. So it's a little bit different because mommies don't lay eggs. They have birth for their babies, okay? Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about adaptation, okay? Adaptations are what helps animals survive in their environment. 
So like for us, we stay in a house to keep us safe from the cold weather, from the rain, from the storms. That's an adaptation, okay? We eat food and water to keep our bodies healthy. That's an adaptation. We have hair on our skin that helps keep us warm and also our skin protects our body, okay? So here's some adaptations that animals have that keeps them safe from their predators. Those are the animals that may want to eat them or hurt them, okay? Remember like the lion might eat the giraffe, so the giraffe needs something to protect it. So it has adaptations from the predators and from the environment, okay? So there's physical or there's behavioral. Some physical adaptations are like the hair, fur, feathers that protects our bodies, maybe a beak or antlers. Antlers can help protect them, okay? Ears can help protect to help us hear. Claws, an animal might use its claws to fight off something. Also, a porcupine has the sharp pokey quills that that hurts people if they have it. And also spray, like the skunk will spray and it's really smelly. It keeps it so nobody wants to get by it, okay? And then also, we have behavioral. Behavioral is something that an animal does, okay? Like an animal might hibernate. Do you remember hibernation? So here's a picture, let me pull this in half, of a bear hibernating, and then you have the two little mice hibernating together. They're hibernating in the winter to keep them warm, okay? They sleep through the winter because it is too cold outside for them, so they have to stay somewhere warm. Another one might be migration. Migration is where animals go somewhere where it's warmer. So birds, they fly south during the winter time because it gets really cold up north and in the south it's warmer and they wanna go where it's warmer. And then when it gets too hot in the south and it's warmer back north, they go back home so they can be there where it's nice, okay? So they fly, they migrate. Sea turtles do the same thing in the ocean by swimming and they go to where the waters are warmer. So here's some pictures of some birds migrating and some sea turtles migrating. Let's see where that goes cute. Now, some physical adaptations like we talked about might be camouflage. Do you know animals can camouflage? That means they can blend in with their environment. They can look the same colors as their environment, so they blend in kind of like they're hiding. Okay, so here is a polar bear hiding in the snow because it's the same color as the snow. In this, can you see what's in here? So can you guess what's in there? Yes, that's an octopus. Do you see the octopus in there? The octopus is blending in. It's camouflaging. Another thing they can do is they can mimic their surroundings. That means they can be the same color or they can kind of be like the same thing. So I'm going to show you a picture of a walking stick that looks just like another stick. You see that? That is a walking stick on a real stick. And it, you can't really tell that it's not a real stick, but that's a, that's a bug. That's an animal. Okay. And then over here, can you see what this one is? Right here is a seahorse in coral. It's mimicking the coral so it can hide from the predators. So those are just some of the ways that animals can keep themselves safe. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick one animal, anything you want. It can be from the ocean. It can be from Africa. It can be a farm animal. It can be a pet. You could do a cat or a dog. And I want you to learn everything you can about your animal and fill out that animal poster, and hopefully I will get to see you and hear about your animal at our last day of school meeting. Thank you everyone for listening today and for learning a little bit more about animals with me. I will talk to you soon.